see my PostgreSQL database? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, um, let's see. This is the data base that I have. Okay. Now, think of a particular bank. Okay. Now, in a bank, you would have employees working there, right? And a yes. bank can have multiple branches in different uh, areas, right? You'll have customers and those customers will have accounts, right? And from those accounts, the customers will do transactions, correct? Now from this ERD diagram, this is called as an ERD diagram, where you can see the relationships between the different tables. Each of these are different tables, okay? Now let's say uh, the first question that I have for you is, now whenever I give you a question, if you think that you need to have visibility over this ERD diagram to solve more questions, you can always ask me. I'll keep coming back here, right? Now let's say, think, uh, let's look at this transactions table, okay? Right? Now, the transaction type of a particular transaction can be different, right? You can do an IMPS transaction, you can do a UPI transaction, you can do an NEFT transaction, right? Now I want to filter only for those transactions that are net banking transaction only, okay? I'll write the question here. Right. Now, uh, whoever feels confident, uh, if you want to answer, you can. Otherwise, I'll again explain how to solve this question. I want to fetch only those transactions that, that are net banking transactions only. Think of the black rectangle. There is some condition being put here, and I need the green rectangle. Okay. I, I'll, I'll take a stab at this. Now, it's been more than three years for me uh, solving SQL questions, but I still follow a definite template so that I don't have to uh, put efforts or remember how to write the code, rather I can focus on solving the problem, right? So what I do is, just for my simplicity, you need not copy my style. It's totally up to you. What I do is, I'll write this, select, and whatever columns or variables I want to see, I'll write here, let's say A, and I'll write it in this style only, because this is easier for me. Okay, then I'll do from the table name. If I want where, I'll put it here, right? Now, the very first thing that I do before solving a question is I write, write this template first, because if I think about writing the template and also solving the question, that makes it harder for me. So first thing I do is I, I write exactly this. I'll look at the table name from here, which is transactions. Okay. And I'll start off with star. Okay. And there is no variable. Now I'll read the question. He write a query to fetch transaction ID, transaction date, transaction amount. Now this is pretty much in the question itself. Right. Yeah, I want to view these three columns only. So I'll take this and directly put it here. Right. So one part is solved. Right. The first part is you have to view these columns. That is the first part. Right. There is a second part of the question, which is the filtering part, which is you have to view these records only for net banking transaction. Now, these are two. Now, once you read this question, you should be able to understand which you might take time for this, but it's okay. Just try to simplify things that there are different parts here and you need to solve different pieces and then join. So this is the first part that I've done here. I want to view these three columns only and now I'll put the where condition because obviously I, I need a certain section of the data. That means it's a filtering or a where condition needs to be put here. So where now uh, the challenge is uh, it's saying that you have to do the filtering for net banking transactions only. Now this is a value somewhere, right? In a particular variable or a column. I don't know which column that is, right? So what I'll do is I'll come here, look at the transactions table. Right. Just by using common sense and reasoning, looks like the column could be transaction type. But how would I be sure? Right. So what I'll do is select 
transcribe transactions. Okay. Now I can do distinct here. I can do group group by as well. So so I'll get to know if net banking is a value in this column or not. Now I see it's here, right? Now I can be confident that where trans type equal to net banking, right? I'll comment this and run. Okay, I made a mistake. Okay, now I think trans date is like this. Clear? Any doubts here or uh, any doubts about how I broke down the problem into two different parts and then solved it together? Let me know if, if you have any questions. Okay, let's move on then. Now. So guys, please acknowledge whether you are clear or not. Okay. Uh, so this is a second question. Okay. Now, again, let's just do, don't get into solving the question. Just read the question. Think what are the different parts. Segregate those parts. Think about the simple solution of each of those parts. And then we will see later how to combine them. Okay. Let's read the question first. The question is write a query to fetch employee name and salary. Right. Now, Employee name and salary. Before this, we have seen that there is an employee table, right? So most probably this question is referring to that question, uh, that table. I'm not sure, but before you even try to investigate, just have some sense that this could be the table or this could be the query. Later, we'll see just to be sure, like what, what we did here, we did a distinct transaction type to be double sure, right? But before we get into the solutioning part, let's have some uh, initial assessment or just to understand that, okay, this is the source of the data. Okay. Now write a query to fetch employee name and salary. Okay. Now, if I have to just fetch employee name and salary, what I'll do is select, let's say employee name. I still don't know what is the table name, how it's written, but just for now I'll write salary from employee, right? First part solved, right? Now the second part is whose salary is greater than 5,000 and who belong to BR1. Now two conditions being put here, but again, I need not worry about those two conditions. I'll just focus on one condition first, whose salary is greater than 50,000. Okay. Now, before I jump into the where condition, let's have a look at whether the name of the table is employee or employees, right? Let's come here. Okay. It's employees. Okay. So I'll let employees here. Let's look at the name of these columns. Okay, first name, last name, and salary. There is no employee name, right? So I'll write first name, let's say last name, and salary, right? So this is not totally completed. I have validated. I have checked this. Now I'm confident that this will work. So let's do a dry run here. Works, okay? Now I'll put in the where condition. First where condition. Where salary is greater than 50,000. Simple salary greater than 50,000. Okay. Now this should work again. Let's see. Works, right? Now how, how are you so sure that this, will, this is working? Because if I run just this much, you see that there are 10 records that are coming here, right? When I run this entire thing, I see seven records coming here. So those red strips are getting filtered out from that diagram, if you remember, right? Now I'll put it another another condition that who belong to BR1. Now, again, uh, what's BR1? I don't know. From which column I'll get BR1? I don't know, right? So when you're not sure, again, go back to the table, right? To the ER diagram. So I see employee ID, first name, last name, salary. The only one column that's left here is branch code. So maybe BR1 is branch code, right? Different branches. So just to be sure again, what I'll do is 
do the same thing that I did for the first question. Select branch code from employees, but I'll put a distinct here. Right? BR1, BR2. Now what happens if I don't put distinct? I hope you guys know this. The values will be repeating, right? BR1, BR2 like this, it will keep repeating, right? So that is why I'm just putting in distinct so that I get to see only the unique values. So I see BR1 and BR2 here. Now, who belong to BR1, this condition I need to enforce. Now I need to join two conditions, right? Those red strips that you saw in that Word document, those are the uh, records which will get filtered out. And it could be because of just one condition or it could be because of a combination of many conditions, right? So I'll put it one more where here. Now, if you're writing two conditions, you don't need to write where again. Just simply write it here, okay? So branch code equal to, because it's a string value, you need to enforce a string. Now, if I run this, let's see if this works. Okay, no values, right? Any thoughts why uh, I did not get any records? Ideally, I should have got, right? Maybe I made a mistake. Right. So after you have added something and it's not working, right? N now the challenge is to identify in which part of the code you have made a mistake, right? So how will you do this? I'll delete this part. And before this, I was getting seven records, right? So this was working fine. So the challenge is in this part, right? So now from my experience, I know that I did not get any record because whatever I put it in, put in here in strings, maybe that is wrong. There is no exact match of BR1 with BR underscore one. Maybe that's my assessment. So what I'll do is I'll again run this and I'll see those exact values of BR1 and BR2. There is no underscore here. And I put underscore here, right? So that is the issue. Now I'll delete this and hopefully you should get either less than seven records or maybe seven records as well. I get six. Clear? Any doubts here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Totally clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Great. Well, do you want me to take up another question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Now, this is the question, okay? Fetch accounts with balance in between 3,000 to 5,000. Now, I'm assuming each one of you has a, either a savings account or a... I don't think you would have a current account. That's for businessmen. At least a savings account you would have, right? Now, you have a balance associated with each of your accounts, right? Now, the question is saying, that filter out accounts whose balance is between 3,000 to 5,000, okay? One of the tips that I would give you when you're solving any questions so that it becomes easier for you, whichever domain problem you are solving or whichever company you're interviewing for, most probably they will give questions related to that industry or domain, right? So be mentally prepared or have a commonsensical reasoning that what kind of data do they capture? What kind of table they could have? Now, because this is banking, so in, in a bank, there are customers and customers have accounts. So without even looking at the database or the table, I could just have a, have a first thought that maybe this is the scenario. Now again, to validate, I'll go to the ERD diagram, right? So let's have a look at those different tables, okay? Transactions, employees, branch, accounts. I get accounts and customers. Okay. Now, let's have a look at accounts. What, what we did for the first two questions is we did not have a look at the table. We just look at what are the column names from the ERD diagram. One of the simpler ways to get a feel of the data is what does a table look like? Okay. From accounts. four columns. Now you see that there's account number and there's a balance associated with each of the accounts. I just need to filter, right? So, and because they haven't specifically mentioned 
that what they want to see, what columns that they want to see. So I'll keep star here only. Not an issue. Okay. Now, what it's saying is fetch accounts with balance in between 3000 and 5000. Okay. So it should be greater than 3000 and less than 5000. Right. Yes, sir. That's two conditions happening together. Either you can have a greater than, we should say that you can have accounts greater than 3000. Right. Or you can have accounts less than 5,000. Now, because it has given between 3,000 and 5,000, so these are two conditions happening together. It's just not visible here. If the language would have been different, like fetch accounts with balance greater than 3,000 and less than 5,000, then you'd have got this directly. But because intentionally the language has been designed in such a way, hence, with practice, you'd get to know that there are two where conditions that are acting here. Okay, so okay, the first part doesn't involve me to do anything. I'll just put select star here, right? Then comes the where condition where balance greater than 3000. Okay, and balance less than 5000, right? Now, do not directly go into putting two of these two conditions together just to test your code, what you should always do is first run this much, which is giving you 50, right? Then run this much after putting in one condition, this is giving you 33 records and then so nine records. Now there is a smarter or a cooler way of doing this. That's using a between keyword. Okay. So you don't need to write two conditions together. Instead, what you can do is where balanced between 3000 and 5000. So between understands that you are trying to put two conditions together. You just need to tell the limits, lower limit and higher limit. This should give you the same result. Okay. Any doubts, any thoughts here? Do you want me to repeat or you want to know anything in more depth, whatever we have covered today? No, sir. It's all clear, sir. Okay. Great. Okay. All right. Uh, if that's the case, I think then we can wrap up for today in case you're totally clear with this. So, uh, you guys would already be aware and confident about where and whatever we have done today. This was the first session from tomorrow. We'll continue from here and we'll get into a little more advanced concepts. We'll see what we'll do tomorrow, but the level of difficulty will start from here. It's not going to decrease. So have some practice. Uh, just try to visualize those uh, green and uh, black and blue rectangles. Uh, I'll try to uh, give you that diagram uh, after this class so that you again have a 